folks, Ray from DCRamerica.com here. Today I've got something a little bit different, uh, and it's an indoor stationary bike. Now before you go and switch to the next video or something else, stay with me for a second. I think you'll find it actually pretty interesting. Uh, and I'll talk about why in the past I've never sort of reviewed this sort of stuff, and then why this is actually unique to me and, and something that kind of intrigues me a little bit. Um, so this is the Watt Bike Atom. Uh, you can see Watt Bike right there. And those that are familiar with the brand, it, they've been around a long time, usually in the higher end uh, indoor bike range. So their current product uh, sells for 2,200 small pounds, which is like, a lot of American dollars and even more Canadian dollars um, and a bunch of euros as well. And it wasn't really super interesting to me at that price point or from a technical feature set standpoint. Whereas this one here is now down to 14.99 pounds. Uh, you'll note I'm using pounds because right now they're only shipping to the UK uh, for this fall at least. As we go into 2018, they're gonna look at find ways to go to other regions, uh, but the exact timing for that is probably more like late 2018 as opposed to earlier 2018. Uh, but if you do call them, they are telling me that they might better work something out with you, but you don't have support on. But that's a whole nother thing for a whole nother deal. Um, let's talk about what's different between those two models and why this is cheaper, uh, yet I think actually better. Um, the first reason is that it has a magnetic flywheel as opposed to the wind and magnetic flywheel, the past one. So you don't see a big wind uh, kind of turn turbine on the bike anywhere, which is what the past one had, um, which should give a little bit better road-like feel. This still has a 4.6 kilo fly, which is pretty solid. It's about uh, 10 and a half, 11 pounds. Uh, the previous one had a 7.5 kilo magnetic flywheel plus a 5.6 kilo uh, wind flywheel or wind effective flywheel there. Um, so that was actually a lot more road resistance. You know, that's, that's way up there in the uh, total flywheel weight range. I think that's kind of the range of like the kicker or something like that, uh, that just feels much, much nicer. Still, this isn't bad at all. Next, this one does need power. As you can see down here, I do have it plugged in. Uh, the previous one could use its own internal generator, so you didn't have to have it plugged in anywhere. You know, I think for most people, since we are talking an indoor uh, bike, that doesn't really matter too much. And so if I had to plug it in, whoop you do These are, neither of them are terribly transportable. You're not gonna like put this in the back of your car and take it to a race or anything like that. Um, it is lighter. This one's 44 kilos for the whole thing compared to 55 kilos of the previous one. In fact, I can roll it around pretty easily. It's got like these roller blade wheels in the front there. Um, so you can see, I can just move it around. It's it's super simple that way. Nothing, nothing too complex there. Um, but the main thing though is the tech inside of it. And that's why I'm interested in this. And I have generally resisted other um, stationary bikes for two reasons. One is I, generally speaking, don't believe that you, if you're doing endurance, long distance cycling, um, like Ironman uh, training and stuff like that, where you're just spending five, six, seven hours on the bike straight up, that you wanna spend that time on your bike. And that bike needs to be precisely the same fit um, as what you're gonna go out and race with. Uh, because those are different things, or different muscle groups and that kind of stuff. And doing an indoor bike, you're not ever gonna have that exact same fit, no matter how customizable it is. And we'll talk about how customizable it is in a moment as well. The second reason why I've generally avoided indoor bikes is they've sucked. I mean, they've been like this vestige of the 1980s and technology wise, and you know, they still only accepted like legacy polar heart rate straps, and there was no a transmission over AMP plus or Bluetooth smart. And you know, Watt Bike did actually address some of that with the latest console. They did have AMP plus broadcasting, uh, but certainly not AMP plus control. And they also didn't have Bluetooth smart. Um, and so things were just kind of hobbled. This here though, this is effectively just like a kicker. It has AMP plus power broadcasting, AMP plus speed and cadence broadcasting. It has AMP plus FEC for control, so I can actually set wattages on this and I can set inclines on it up to 25%. Um, it does Bluetooth smart broadcasting of all that same jazz, Plus it also supports the Bluetooth Smart Trainer Control Standard, uh, which is out now and Zwift and Trainer Road are also supporting that too. And they also support this device, um, which makes it so that it's, it's modern. What's even cooler though is that inside this thing, it'll actually translate AMP Plus to Bluetooth Smart for this. And you may be wondering why you care about that. Well, right now, I'm wearing an AMP Plus heart rate strap. And so this iPad can actually see my AMP Plus heart rate strap because it's doing the translation on the fly inside of this and retransmitting it to that which is pretty darn cool. It's something that like Wahoo talked about three or five years ago now and, and never did inside the trainer, um, which is too bad because they're doing it here and it's, it's a pretty nifty little thing. Now, before we get to the apps, let's do a few more spec type stuff because everyone loves specs. Um, the next thing is this has a way smaller footprint than the previous Watt bike. Uh, I'm putting the specs on the screen right now because I'm not gonna spit out all the different centimeters and stuff by memory. Um, I can barely remember half the stuff in the video as it is. And then we talk about adjustability and that's something that, you know, Watt bike is pretty proud of and that's why they believe they can get closer uh, to what you would replicate or have on a bike on an indoor trainer. Uh, so kind of a walk from the back to the front here. Um, the first thing is you can adjust with a simple lever, uh, if I put it the right way, uh, your seat so you can go up, like if you were crazy high or something, 
crazy tall, down, pop it in the middle there. Um, I can also go ahead and adjust the saddle forward and back. This does take an aller wrench, but it's no big deal. You have the markers right there on both of these, by the way, if you can see that. Um, so you can adjust it super quick. You can swap your own saddle in there if you want to. No problem there, standard issue saddle rails. You can slide it back and forth as well. Um, nothing you can change here except you can put your own pedals on as I've done there. I've actually got my PowerTap P1 pedals because I want to see how accurate this is. They claim, by the way, 2.5% accuracy, which is the same as the existing watt bike and pretty much the same as every other power meter and trainer on the market. Um, two water bottle holders. They're water bottle holders, but you could swap your own. They're nothing, they're nothing unique there. Um, next. Okay. So... Air bars are not required. They do come in the package. Uh, one thing, you can pull these off right there and you can pop your own pads in there or whatever you want to do. Um, while I've got these off, uh, you can go ahead and adjust both of these pad locations in further, uh, out further. There's no problem there. You can also remove the arrow bars entirely. It's just a simple Allen wrench, one, two, done. It takes like seven seconds, uh, which is pretty cool. Then you've got the road bike um, handlebars there. You can even swap your own road bike handlebars in there if you want. So you can actually completely take this out and be done. You can slide this entire thing back and forward using this little red doohickey right here and an Allen wrench to loosen it. Um, so, got the Allen wrench. To show you that real quick, to show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, loosen this for a second. Okay, so now that we've got loosen to show you how this will work, I can actually slide this whole thing like this, slide it back, forward, anywhere I want, and then simply lock in a place. I can also, as you can see there, I can adjust going up and down a little bit as well. Uh, I'm not gonna keep on loosening it too much because I don't really wanna have to redo it later on, uh, but still pretty darn cool, pretty relatively straightforward and easy. Um, moving that out of the way. Up next, we got the arrow bars and the tablet holder. Uh, so you can put your own tablet in there. I've just got an iPad. All you do is just simply pop these two little thingies right there and then you can take this out and you're good to go um, you can see you can adjust it and pull it out entirely if you want to um, but this allows you to put a phone in there or really any tablet you want the only criticism i would have in this particular region of the bike is that it's not super secure like i'm not going to whack it hard but you can see how just doing that it bumps it halfway um, if i were to whack it much harder i could see it flying off and that would be a very sad panda moment because um, that's like probably a third of the cost of the bike right there uh, or what it would cost for the bike keeping in mind again you supply your own tablet that is not included here at all okay last but not least before we talk apps i'm going to kind of walk you through some of the apps real quick here uh, let me talk about fit um, so as i mentioned earlier i've kind of shied away from these sort of things because I, I really believe that you should be on your bike if you're doing endurance sports training you know if you're talking a gym setting and stuff like that this is awesome um, if you're talking about something we're not necessarily training for you know long endurance stuff like triathlons ironmans in particular we're doing five six seven hours on a bike then it probably doesn't matter as much uh, but as anyone who knows who's done an ironman when you switch from one bike to another bike um, in training and season you're going to notice those differences in your muscles even if it's just a few millimeters uh, one example of that that you can't change on this bike is the q factor so in this case the q factor for this right here is 160 millimeters uh, which is to about 10 millimeters more than you would find on a typical road bike or a tri bike. Um, it's still less than you find on a mountain bike, which is about 175-ish, 170. Uh, and it's also less than you found on the previous Watt bike, which was about 170 as well. Um, so it is nice to see them shrinking that up. That is still 10 millimeters. Uh, that's, it's a fair chunk, it's a centimeter. Um, by the same token, as I talked about this in the limits power meter thing, you know, a year or two ago, there are some studies that talk about Q-factor and changes, but the reality is for people that go between road bikes and mountain bikes, the Q-factor differs by almost twice the amount of this. So, eh, whatever, really. Basically, whatever. Let's talk apps. I'm going to toss my shoes on real quick here. Okay, I'll actually let you hear it. Um, keep in mind two things. One, you're listening to the mic on my jersey right now, so everything sounds beautiful. I'm going to switch to the camera mic and then I'm going to shut up um, about two seconds after that so you can hear my voice, you can hear the echo. And you can hear this in cruise along. So they rank it at 70 decibels um, in a configuration I think of 70 RPMs and a certain uh, power but they haven't provided that yet. I would say it's about that. Uh, in this particular gearing combination it sounds quieter than most trainers, but not very much quieter. Um, again, sound is all about speed. It's not about power. Um, so the faster you go and what gearing combinations you have changes that. Speaking of which, gearing combinations, on the front of the handlebars here, there are actually shifters. So I can shift right now. Pressing those buttons, and that adds a lot of wattage. So now I'm wattage-wise cruising through 
for uh, 350 or so. So this is their stock app right here. One thing you will notice is that they have the ability to do left right power balance, which is pretty cool. Something you don't see in a lot of other uh, units out there today. Uh, first of all, we've got the test that you can do. So you can do a 20 minute FTP test, a three minute test, um, the NHL 45 Wingate combine test. And then I can go into the settings here and I can tweak things uh, like my profile, weight, age, gender, all that kind of stuff. Um, saved heart rate belts uh, and the watt bikes that are saved to this if you have multiple watt bikes in case you have that much cash. But that's not what's really interesting. What's really interesting here is the different apps that it supports. So I'm gonna start off with Zwift to show you what that looks like. Uh, so I'm gonna crack open Zwift here. And now I can go ahead and pair it to the unit. Um, so I'd already paired it once. I'm just gonna start back at the beginning here. I choose power source. I will see my watt bike atom right there. Unit number nine off the production line for those that are curious. There's also cadence and there is uh, the controllable portion is lit up now as well. Speed of course comes from power. So that goes to gray. And then on the heart rate, I will take my ticker heart rate strap here. In this case, it's also broadcasting Bluetooth Smart, so Zwift picks it up just fine. And I just hit let go. Let's go. So I go up in there and I pedal. Um, now, as I mentioned before, to shift gears, all I'm gonna do is simply use these buttons up here. So the top one makes it harder. Now the shifting is a little bit weird to get used to, to be honest. Um, there isn't like, it's not like a bike where you just like click, shift, done, boom. It's a bit of a delay there maybe a second or two, but it just kind of, it feels, feels awkward. And maybe I get used to it after time, but this is sort of the first look at things. Speaking of which, I'll do a review later on, uh, probably in early October or so. Uh, but, you know, right now I'd say the shifting is a little bit weird for me. I wish it was instantaneously faster. Um, and by instantaneously faster, I mean instantaneous, which I know is a double, I don't care. So now let's look at trainer road. I can go ahead here and uh, go into devices. And I see the watt bike atom right there. Tap it. There it is. It's ready to go. I mean, it's that simple. Now, at this point, I could go ahead and start the workout, um, but I know already that there is a bit of a bug and it's not quite controlling it yet, um, which is understandable. This is final hardware. Um, this was just delivered a couple hours ago. It, it is totally final hardware though, uh, but the software isn't quite yet final. Um, and also on trainer road side, this is a, an alpha copy that works with uh, the new BLE controlled trainers, uh, the standard there, and that hasn't quite happened yet. Um, speaking of which, I may have just realized that I cut off my head in this whole thing, so if so, I'm sorry. Still, there you go. That's just a look, an initial look at the new Watt Bike Atom. Uh, check out my full post down in the description right there. Um, for more on that, uh, I'll do, there's a first look post right now there, and then you'll see an in the review, again, probably like early October-ish or so, uh, once these things get out there, and there's a couple of the app things that are all settled out as well. But so far, it's pretty cool. Like I'd say this is definitely something that certainly would appeal um, to a large portion of the population, especially if you didn't already have <laughs> 15 or 20 trainers sitting around the room. But anyways, uh, go ahead and whack that like button down below as well as the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Have a good one. <laughs>